Oh, yeah! What's happening, Internet? My name is Lucas, a.k.a. Macho Molga, and welcome back to another episode of the Pokemon X Earn It Lock. Uh, today's episode is brought to you by allergies, because they are just smacking me around today. So, if you have allergies, props to you for dealing with them right now, and if you are ready to watch me sniffle and wipe my nose for 20 minutes, then you have come to the right place. Anyway, because uh, I know I forgot to do it in the last episode, uh, I want to just say uh, what the qu uh, question of the day is. Uh, today, it's going to be, if you could introduce one item into the next generation of Pokemon games, what would it be and why? And uh, for me, it would be uh, some kind of item similar to Eviolite or Life Orb, how Life Orb gives you a buff to your attacking moves in exchange for 10% of your health each time you attack, and Eviolite gives you a buff to your defenses as long as the Pokemon can't evolve anymore. I would offer one, some kind of item that does like an attack defense or special attack special defense boost in exchange for only being able to know three moves. Uh, and I think that would be something like really interesting. I think that would add kind of a bit of strategy to it, like, Pokemon that suffer from like move syndrome where they don't really need like they almost don't need four moves like Typhlosion could almost get away with just knowing like Eruption, Flamethrower, Fire Blast, and like Hidden Power Grass and if you gave it like that item and it like buffed its special attack and special defense exchange it would be able to like switch moves I think that'd be kind of interesting uh, I don't know that's just kind of my take if you have a different take on like what some kind of item you'd like to see introduced whether battling or non battling item leave it in the comment section below we'll look at that after the video but anyway I just went ahead and I don't know how many people know this how common knowledge it is but the second blade of grass in Pokemon X and Pokemon Y will always be a static level 3 Pidgey so I didn't count that for our counter for this area I just went ahead and I skipped over it before the video started so we're gonna get right into it now and what do we have here Definitely just going to learn how to catch a Pokemon. Oh, hi, Macho. Come learn how to catch Pokemon with me. Serena's mom and dad are amazing trainers. That's why she knows my, That's why she knows so much about catching Pokemon and battling. Well, mom and dad are... Mom and dad may be good trainers, but that has nothing to do with me. Right, Serena, you show the world. Okay, now watch carefully, you two. Don't treat me like I'm a child. Ooh, that bundle be no. Well, no, we're learning how to catch Pokemon because I did not know how to do it before. I'm gonna get a sip of water. I would really, really, just once love to see this pre-scripted, like, tutorial on how to catch Pokemon go horribly wrong. And just have Fletchling crit this bundle be on the first hit and knock it out. Because I'd love to see if they actually like program text out. I mean, I know it's impossible, but I'd love for, like, Serena to come, like, sulking back and be like, well, to catch a Pokemon, you wouldn't do that. But that, that'll that obviously never happen. I mean, I'd like to believe it would, but, I mean, you can only ask for so much. I wonder where this Fletchling actually ends up going. Like, Serena only uses it, like, up until we're outside the Battle Mason, and then she never has a Talon Flame, so I don't really know. Wow, the Pokemon went inside the Pokeball? Shauna, what do you think your chessman is inside right now? Excellent question. Here, I'll share some Pokeballs with the two of you. Macho obtained the Pokeballs. We really need those. So now our Earn It Lock can officially start now that we have Pokeballs. Oh wait, we bought some before the last episode anyway. But now we're finally actually officially receiving them. Pokeballs? Do you think I can catch Pokemon with them too? Sure, you can catch the Pokemon around here just by throwing a Pokeball near them. Okay, if I find a cute Pokemon, I'll throw lots of Pokeballs at it, and then we'll become friends. When you catch a wild Pokemon, it makes your Pokemon stronger, too. Good luck! Something else I really liked to introduce in Gen 6 was that you actually get experience for catching Pokemon. You say anything after that? No, just the same dialogue. Okay, let's get our encounter here. I don't know what's going to be... No, I never encounter Fletchlings, and I always want a Talonflame when I don't choose the Fire Starter. So now I chose the Fire Starter, I'll get a Zigzagoon. Excellent. Well, you know, Zigzagoon, when it evolves into Lionoon, isn't terrible. It's not the best option. I probably won't end up using it unless I have to, but, well, no, it's not the worst thing that could happen. Do Scratch. Okay. Todd's attack fell. Just gonna go for another Scratch. 
Yeah, that looks catching range. Watch it. Ooh, Pokeball. If this doesn't catch, I'll be thoroughly surprised. One, two, three. Gotcha. Zigzagoon was caught. It walks in zigzag fashion. It's good at finding items in the grass and even on the ground. Pickup ability. Give a nickname? Yes. We're going to name this Zigzagoon the generic thing, which I name all of my Zigzagoons, which is Ziggy. What kind of Zigzagoon do we have? I don't know if you guys can hear my garage door opening below me. My room is right above the uh, garage, so it very well could be. And if you can't hear that, I apologize deeply. Ooh, is that an adamant? That is an adamant zigzagoon with gluttony. Huh. Wonder what? That might not. End that might not even end up being bad. When two trainers' eyes meet, a Pokemon battle must begin. I don't know why, I give all of my generic trainer Joey's essentially the same voice, which is just super nerdy, kind of like bug catcher voice. And look, he has a Ziggy of his own! Thought I should be able to walk this thing up with Ember, I would imagine. We've gotten two really decent natures so far on both of our Pokemon, which means that at some point, our luck just has to take an entirely 360 degree turn, and I'm not really looking forward to when that happens. One more ember. So basically, I don't know. Uh, like, this, like, opening part to the game, like, I really like that you get, like, a bunch of encounters right away. Like, what, you have that route there, you have Santaloon Forest, you have the route route outside of Santaloon Forest, and you have the right, you have the beginning of Route 22 out there next to the gym. I think it's 22, it might be 21. But I don't know. You get a lot of encounters, but, like, after you get, like, the ton of encounters here, which you really can't even end up using them all, because if you have five Pokemon going into the first gym, there's no way that you're going to be leveled properly for it. And, oh, who do we have here? Oh, it's Shauna. Wait up, let's walk together. I feel like something exciting will happen if I stay by you. I'll heal your Pokemon whenever you need me to. Hopeful. What kind of item do we have here? Potion. But yeah, I mean, and then you have, like, a really, like, weird part in the middle of the game where you have, like, almost no encounters. I feel like the encounters in this game are definitely not evenly distributed. The way leads to a dead end, huh? All right, I guess I'll have to save my progress so I don't forget where I've done so far. Nice breaking of the fourth wall there. And just, the amount of encounters are just definitely not super evenly distributed throughout this game. So, I don't know. I definitely like that you get a lot of early encounters. Because if you do have an encounter, like a Zigzagoon, you get a chance to kind of make up for it. I would love to find a Scatterbug in here. I'm going to think of it. What kind of hurt? Yeah, I actually do want you to get my Pokemon. What episode are we on? We're, this will be the second episode of the uh, Earn It Lock. I don't know. I don't know what we're gonna try and get to today. Honestly, I'm hoping that we get out of, like out of Santaloon Forest, and that'll kind of. Uh, I'll, I was too busy talking. I didn't even have the proper amount of time to react to the fact that we just got a Weedle. Oh, depending on what nature it is, honestly, Beedrill can be not terrible. I'm just going to go ahead and throw a Pokeball at it. Especially in this gen, when you have a ton of fairy... Like, they kind of, like, put a lot of fairy types into the game. Uh, just, like, kind of during the introduction of fairy types. So, I mean, having a poison type on the team would not be bad. Although, Beedrill did get, like, a slight buff to its stats. It's just not the number one thing I would have liked to have found in this area.
Weedle, the hairy bug Pokemon, often found in forests and grasslands, it has a sharp, toxic barb of around two inches on top of its head. Give a nickname to the cot Weedle? Yes. Uh, another generic name that I always name all of my Beedrills or Weedles is Apprentice. And that is because one of my favorite books is called The Beekeeper's Apprentice. It's a uh, like, new age Sherlock Holmes novel. If you haven't read it, I'd go find it. But Beekeeper's Apprentice, Beedrills, Bee, so I always kind of name them Apprentice. And I don't know why, I just kind of like the word Apprentice. Let's go check out our new friend Apprentice, what you got working with you. Another attack up nature. Oh my god, we're getting way too lucky on these natures, but I don't really like the fact that it's defense down because Beedrill already cannot take a hit, and the fact that it's going to be even less bulky on the physical side is kind of bad, but out of the two of these, which one am I going to possibly want to use more? Um, probably Apprentice, because Apprentice can get like stuff like Sword Stance and stuff later. And also, I'm going to really, a Poison Bug type, I think, fits pretty well onto the team. So we'll go ahead and rock out with it. Meet all the people out here. Why am I trying to walk in the grass? I'm not even going to try to read that text. Tierno is going to get into a fight. And Generic Paralyze Heal here? Yep. So basically, um... I don't know, now, like, this is super early on in my YouTube channel history, and I don't imagine a lot of people are going to be watching this, but hey, if you're watching this currently, it means you did come out. Props to you. I really appreciate it. And um, just kind of like, I don't know, I'm going to kind of get some feedback from people about what other things I should do in conjunction with YouTube. Like, I've been thinking about Twitch, possibly doing some things on Twitch. Like, I don't know, I've never been super into shiny hunting. Like, I, I go bananas if I ever see a shiny just like naturally running across it, but I don't know. I've never been super into like shiny hunting as like actually spending the amount of time you need to go, oh, I forgot to change battle style to set. I knew I forgot to do something before I started this video. Oh, well, I'll just click no and it asked me, but um, I don't know if you guys want to leave in the comment section, like what your opinions on Twitch is, do you like it, do you not like it, would you like to see, like what you would like to see out of Twitch that you're not currently seeing. Um, I was thinking maybe I would do something along the lines of like a Twitch only playthrough of something, like maybe I would play do a Nuzlocke of a different game solely on Twitch. Uh, but I don't really know how I feel about that either. Oh, Prentice grew to level 3. And no, because we should be on set battle style. But basically, just leave in the comments section down below what you think of Twitch, what you would like to see out of it. Uh, do I want to? I want to stay in here for sure. You're not a fire type yet. I can ember you pretty safely. Will this Oko? Nope. Fletchling, you bulky little bird. But that's that's really what I've been thinking. Trying to think of like things I could do in conjunction with YouTube, and I'm not quite sure on what I'm gonna be doing yet. Especially now that I'm just getting started, like, I'm focusing a lot of energy into doing just, like, this playthrough and kind of, like, learning a lot more about, like, Photoshop and Final Cut and things to make, like, my channel look better than it does currently. That is a decent amount of special attack for only level 8. But, yeah. Cheer up, Scatterbug. We lost this time, but we'll get the next one who comes along for sure. I am pretty sure that you're level... Four or three scatter bug and your fletching will not be doing anything. Oh Jesus, Tierno! Just come barging through here, you. Okay, this this getting annoying. There we go. Want me to help your Pokemon Macho? Yes, I do. There is absolutely no other reason to talk to you right now. And now that I got my Weedle, this will be a good Pokemon. Nope, just another Weedle. The only thing more exciting than Weedle v. Weedle is Metapod v. Metapod. Oh god, that does absolutely nothing. And I am not sticking around here for 15 turns, so I'm just going to go ahead and peace out. I'm trying to think. There's just something I always kind of have problems with, and I don't know if anyone else there that's like also kind of like being like anyone else there that's kind of like a small poketuber like kind of trying to figure out like what to talk about during the off times uh in playthroughs 
That's something that I've always kind of... Oh, what do, I, can I, do I think I can get away running from you? If I can, I think I can live one hit. Okay, cool. But it's kind of like during the off times of playthroughs, what, something I'm going to start doing is like selecting a subject for the video that I'm going to kind of like be discussing and talking about just to kind of fill up some space during like the times where you're just like walking through Sansaloon Forest and there's nothing really like game-wise going on. Um, but for this video, I didn't really think of anything that I like really, really wanted to talk about. So I'm just kind of going randomly off the top of my head, things that have been going on in my life, things like, do I want to do Twitch? Things like that. As we see the Pikachu, the tail whipping yet only has spe special attacks Pikachu. I'm going to see if I can poison you real quick. Please don't kill. I, I didn't actually think to look that it was level 5 and that it's a stage 1 mon, so I'm s more than semi-happy that didn't just kill me. So we're going to go ahead and switch out right now to uh, Todd. Pikachu goes for Growl. <laughs> Jokes on you again, I only have special attacks. But also something else that you guys can leave down in the comment section below, and I know that I am just asking you to leave so many things in the comments, but like, I've kind of been like looking at what other Poketubers do as far as like video length wise, like, um, what shade, like Shady Penguin, what his, most of his videos run like 20 to 30 minutes most of the time, falling in between that range, and I think that was just, that was just a solid place to start for me, uh, kind of like trying to go no more than that, trying to stick around that area as Todd grows to level 9. And I feel like, I don't know, I feel like when I'm watch just from personal preference, when I'm watching a YouTube video, if you get into like that dang apprentice growing levels, if you get start to grow up into that like somewhere like, like 35 to 40 minute range, you start to like not even almost not that you're not like paying attention to the video anymore but you kind of start to like doze kind of like start to get out of it like you're just kind of like looking for the ending of the video at that point so i think like starting off this channel at like 20 to 25 minutes per video seems like a solid idea um pants here can I actually i can't do anything to you with apprentice that's for sure yeah but i want the experience and so that's uh, Pretty much my plan right now for video length is going to be 20 to 25 minutes. And that seems just like really solid to me. I probably do more to this thing with Ember than I do with Scratch, especially given my attack versus special attack stats. Oh, especially now that he's lowering my attack. One more should do it. But, I don't know. I'm just going to randomly say I don't know in the middle of not actually saying a sentence or anything and just kind of hope that you guys understand what I'm talking about. But, um, after we get out of here, what do we have? We have to do one encounter. We have a couple of trainers. And we're running probably around, like, yeah, like 18, 19 minutes right now. And so I think what we're going to do for this video is, oh, crap, no, before I face you, I want to heal is we're probably just going to go ahead and get out of Santa Loon Forest. And then we're going to, I I mean, I, depending on how much time we have left after we get out of Santa Loon Forest, probably just go ahead and uh, end the video there. Ooh. Uh, you're only level two. What can you do with Poison Sting Apprentice? Absolutely jack diddly squat still. <laughs> uh, Weedle and Zigzagoon. Um, yeah, let's just go ahead and switch out. Maybe should have switched into Ziggy to get some experience for her. But nah. Todd will be able to wipe this... Oh, pretty. Oh my god, I still haven't set Battle Style to set yet. Oh, first turn poison on the Poison Sting. Okay. 
do the set the battle style to set, set the battle style to set, set the battle style to set. This this is not something new just for YouTube. Like I don't have jitters from being on camera. I just always forget to change my settings when I'm doing a new playthrough for the first time. And there's been times where I like remind myself every single battle that I need to change the battle style to set after this battle. And then I'll get done with the battle and I won't do it. And I'll get to like the third gym before actually changing my tech speed to fast and my battle style to set. Oh god, because I'm just a bit of a mess. And I'm actually really happy that my allergies have not just, oh my god, that my allergies have not just caused me to be sneezing this entire video yet. I know I'm jinxing myself by saying that, but I don't know, I didn't even have allergies up until like two years ago, and then I suddenly decided that my body was just like, hey, you want to know what you need? Really, really stopped up nose, watery eyes, and the inability to breathe through your nose for like four, three to four months out of the year. And I was like, yeah, I do, because I don't like being perfectly healthy. Oh, God, I just jinxed myself. Now I'm starting to get a runny nose. Scatterbug, when you look at like, when, in my personal opinion, between like Scatterbug, Weedle, Caterpie, all the uh, possible like generic bug Pokemon that you get in like the first forest route. Scatterbug's probably my favorite just because I think Verizion's design was done really, really well. Um, do I actually want the experience from this thing? How much does the poison sting do? In before one damage. Eh, that's not bad, but I still don't want to stay in doing it. Hop out of that. Get another potion. Oh my god, the runny nose is coming. Why did I jinx myself? There's the Fletchling. I don't know, I would love to have Gale Wings in this playthrough, but there's absolutely no chance of finding a hidden ability Fletchling. Oh no. Thank god you don't have Peck yet, but that was tons of damage because you're still a normal type and that stab. I'm going to hop out of here with Todd right now. Who is still poisoned. I thought I healed before that. I still haven't set the battle style to set. What is wrong with me? <laughs> Alright, you wanna know what? Do I actually want the exp I don't want to risk going down to poison. This guy's gonna yeah, great, just get away. Okay, right now. Right now. Change the settings right now. Options. Fast. Set battle style. Yes. Hello. <laughs> That's my dad. Oh, I'm recording. Oh. Sorry, I didn't knock. I didn't mean to ruin your recording. <laughs> no, you're good. So, you're the first to arrive. Looks like my new neighbor has someone with a lot of potential. The way Pokemon move, it's just incredible. I want to show off some of that spirit when I dance. Here, no. Could you think about something besides how Pokemon move for once? We're all here. Let's go to Santa Loon City. Okay. And Serena has to be ahead of us. Route 3. I am never going to understand the actual names below the routes. What are you all going to do? Why, look for Pokemon, of course. The professor did ask us to complete the Pokedex, after all. And furthermore, different Pokemon prefer living in different places. To put it another way, it's a chance to find different Pokemon than the ones in the forest. I'll bet different Pokemon will use different moves. I sure want to see lots of moves. I'm sure you do, Tierno. What are you going to do, Serena? I'm going to go to Santa Luna City's gym and challenge the gym leader. You see, Pokemon trainers find out how good they really are by challenging the leaders of Pokemon gyms. Wow, you sure know a lot. It's because mom and dad taught me so much. So she Wait, at the beginning of the, the very last route before we got to the forest, she talks about how her parents have nothing to do with her. And now it's because her parents taught her so much. Serena, you're contradicting yourself at every turn. Here, I have some of you. I I wrote down ten different tips every trainer should know. Here's one for you. 
Why don't you obtain the adventure rules? Something else I will never look at. If you get if you're puzzled about something, try looking in these rules. I can guarantee you I won't be. Oh, this is great. I'm gonna spend some time getting to know little Chespin. What are you gonna do, Macho? Well, I'm gonna snag this encounter and then end the episode. I will save that trainer for later. Oh, am I still poisoned? That would help to know. I am still poisoned, and I have an antidote. Go ahead and heal up. I know I'm right next to a Pokemon Center, but the last thing I want to do is run into a Dunsparce right now that just bodies me. Uh, please come out, little Pokemon. Please come out, little Pokemon. Thank you. Oh my god. Goodness, he has a Bunnelby. The amount of luck going through this playthrough. This thing definitely has huge power. I'd be willing to bet anything that this is a huge power Bunnelby because someone upstairs is just shining on us. I mean, Zigzagoon, Weedle, Bunnelby? My goodness, the encounters. The amount of power in these encounters is just ridiculous. One Pokeball without even hurting it? That's the true sign of a Pokemon that is to be feared. Apprentice does gear up to level 6, so you're one level away from evolving into Kakuna. I'm pretty sure you're one level away. That's a decent attack stat for a bug. Oh god, Bunnelby, what are you? What is your name going to be? I would love to give a nickname to you. Uh, well, let's just go with Bugs. Oh, you know, you're a girl. Well, then we're going to go with Lola. Because Lola Bunny. Even though when you evolve, you look like just a really ugly dude with big ears, you're still going to be Lola. So let's check Lola's nature and stuff before we go. Lola summary. Tackle, agility, leer, cheat pouch. Oh, but another attack up, Major. My god, the amount of physicality in these mons is ridiculous. So, we're going to save here. Would you like to save? Yes, I would love to save. Anyway, guys, thank you for watching the second episode of the Pokemon X Ernit Lock. I almost forgot the name to my own thing. Uh, please leave a like if you've enjoyed the video. If you'd like to see this face over your monitor more often, please go ahead and subscribe. My name is Lucas, a.k.a. Macho Malga, and I'll see you next time. Oh, yeah!